I would like to talk to you about extensions today as a lot of students, a lot of beginners try to avoid extensions by shifting. In fact, there are also a lot of teachers who on purpose uh, don't teach extensions as such because they feel the extra tension on the hand um, isn't good for the student and uh, creates tenseness. Mm -hmm. I know what they mean, but I truly believe in extensions as they make, essentially they make our lives easier when we get to play repertoire and also to really know the geography on the cello. It's only a black fingerboard and if we don't know exactly how our hand is positioned for what notes, for what key, how the hand should be positioned and where it is, then we don't know the notes we are playing and then number one, it's harder to play in tune, number two, it's harder to be really secure and safe on the fingerboard and also it's harder to learn by memory. So. The extensions, if I show you on my bow, backwards extensions are easy, obviously. When we play, our thumb is always, if you can see it here, our thumb is always opposite the second finger, or roughly opposite the second finger. When we do a backwards extension, it's easy. We simply stretch our first finger backwards. Now, we don't do it like this. That would not be an extension. People do that when they haven't really learned how to do an extension. Let me just put my cello down. I mean, if you have an extremely big hand, long, long fingers, then you probably get away with doing it like this. But that's actually not correct. You really want to move your elbow forward. It's hard for me to show it to you. Move your elbow forward. The elbow comes forward. Also, you can see my wrist, depending on how big your hand is, my hand is fairly small. For a big extension, I need to turn my, turn my elbow forward. My wrist, you can see, also comes kind of forward. And I'm stretching my first finger backwards. And it's literally, this looks better, it's literally, my, my first finger is look, pointing upwards. This is how it should look. Right, that's a proper extension. Elbow forward, first finger stretching upwards. That way you can reach any extension, whether it's just a normal extension or whether you actually want to do even an octave. Yeah? Octaves are obviously harder to do. Now, that's the backwards extension and that's fairly easy. All you have to do is this. Yeah? That's easy and you can practice it in the drive without having to play. The forward extension is a little bit more tricky and that's where a lot of people go wrong because they're trying to extend like this and that is totally wrong. What have I done? I have not moved my thumb. That's why my hand looks so strange. So when I extend, if you look, I use my first finger as an anchor. I, I move it downwards like this, the, the, the thumb is the first finger to move. The thumb, or it moves together, is the second finger. But you always think of your thumb first. Thumb goes down. Then you replace it. And you can see, let me show you again. The thumb moves down, can you see? And it stays opposite the second finger. Now we have again the same positioning of the hand as we had in the backwards extension. Forward extension, backwards extension, backwards extension, forward extension. Can you see I always use my first finger as an anchor and then move my thumb down and the other fingers follow my thumb. Then I have again the proper extended positioning. Once I'm used to doing it and I don't have to think about it anymore, and I see, say, you know, I'm on the G string and I see B natural and the C sharp, it doesn't take me anything. I just, it doesn't take me any, any extra thinking. None of this business, what a lot of people do, just shifting, because it isn't a shift. 
And also when we do well something fast, if we play a fast scale or something, that will take too long. Yeah, it needs to be ba da 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 da. Now I show you on the cello. You want to show you from the side one more time. So when I extend, can you see as my thumb? Can you see that my thumb moves down like this? Yeah. And from the front, it's hard to see here now. Let me just show you moving the video. Can you see my thumb underneath? The thumb is always the first one to move. And my wrist is slightly coming out to accommodate the elbow. Okay. Now when you play a piece, when you play a piece and there's an extension coming up. There's, let's say on two strings, two extensions coming up. The people who don't extend, they have to go. Like this. Well, I can just keep my fingers here. Again, not quite visible from here. Let me show you again. Da, 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 da. Can you see if I play it fast? Da, 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 da. Now if I don't do extensions but I shift. Da, 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 da. It's a lot of movement going on, right? We always try to move our hand as little as possible, not too much up and down and left and right and center because then we go out of tune. So we just keep the hand in position. Da, 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 da. And I know the concern about some teachers and people about this tension in the hand, but believe me, once you're used to it, there is no problem. It's completely normal. It's like doing ballet at the beginning, when you start off stretching and all that, it, it's, uh, there's a bit of a tension, but eventually it's just normal. You don't even think about it anymore, but then you know exactly where you are, normal, extension and you and it, it makes you playing so much safer that's it if you have any questions text me under a uh, comment underneath i'm happy to reply to any problems or questions all right bye